savageorlandomagic.com. Huge. Uh, obviously, you guys weren't planning on it, but you get the, the extra day or two off in between games uh, with the Celtics postponement. Uh, how much was that rest needed, and, and how did you, did you utilize your time? I think it was, uh, you know, it was good for us because we're playing every other day and we're going to play every other day until the end of the month. Uh, so I think this extra day, you know, especially with some of the guys we have out and everything, was uh, pretty good for us to kind of, you know, take some time, uh, rest, recover. And uh, so I think it was good. And then uh, personally for me, it was really good because we had just, you know, came back from a three-day trip and we we're going to be here for a day or two and then leave for another 10. So... I got an extra two days I spent with my family. You know, I took advantage of it. You know, two days off where I could spend time with my with my kids, my wife. Uh, so it was, you know, it was good for me. You know, um, get some rest, build up some energy, and get back at it. Phil Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Uh, I know. I know. Coaches talked a lot about kind of the mental strain of of the schedule. Just, just how, how do you feel that, that you're handle you're handling it? How, how, how do you feel the team is, is handling kind of the, the grind of the schedule and then and, and how just from a mental break, how much, how much needed was this, this, you know, unexpected couple of days off. Well, we actually had in the past, even when uh, things were normal, uh, we, we had months where we played every other day, actually. I remember though. So I mean, it, it's not you know, easy, but you know, it's just the way it is. And we're not the only team in the NBA that does it. Other teams do it as well. So you just, you know, have to make sure you take care of your body, you prepare for, you know, the games well. You know, our practices have been much much lighter because of, you know, the condensed schedule. So uh, it's just, you know, part of it. It's our, it's our job. You know, we have to, you know, be professionals and do our job. And, you know, complaining is not going to do anything about it. So all you can do is, just, you know, approach it the right way. And I think that so far we did a good job. You know, I think if it wasn't for, you know, injuries, it'd be better. We'd be even playing better. So it's just, you know, it's hard when you go through all that, plus you have guys out. Uh, it's a little, that's just the hardest part because there's so, so little time between games, you know, guys can't get back into it. So that's the only really thing that's, you know, made it a little harder for us. But other than that, you know, it's, it's been okay. And I think now I know with this little two, three day break that we got, she'll feel great going forward. Jamie, say WKMG. Hey, Vooch, um, just wondering what you think about, um, you know, the, the new tighter rules that the NBA announced uh, when, when it comes to COVID, how does it, impact you if at all just what are your thoughts on it i think it, it was needed uh i mean obviously you know this this virus is very serious not only you know towards our league but as far as the whole world and so whatever it takes you know for us to be able to to play and uh, you know have, have our jobs we need to do it and uh you know, i'm sure you know everybody would prefer to you know be able to live freely but this moment is not is the case for around the world i mean a lot of countries are under lockdown a lot of cities a lot of states around here so it's just, uh, I think the NBA is doing the right thing, you know, uh, making sure we, we, we uh, you know, take care of the players' health first and then everything else after that. But, uh, I mean, also, you, know, you have to understand that, you know, this virus is serious. So you never know how it could affect a player or a staff or somebody that's, you know, a little older on the staff or coaching or, you know, a front office or whatever. So there's a lot of people involved. And so we have to make sure that we take all precautions needed you know, to, to, to keep uh, everybody safe and to also keep this, you know, league going because if, the league was to shut down again and it'd be you no know, terrible consequences and who knows when we'll be back to, to this level so it's important that we take it we can do everything we can you know to make keep everybody healthy and uh, safe and so i think the league is doing the right thing and i mean like coach said before you know the i think the nba is one of the best leagues in the world you know looking after players and making sure that they, they're on top of everything josh robbins the athletic Nick, from, from your perspective, how tough has this uh, injury been and this layoff been for Evan? It's been uh, hard for him. I mean, he, he's a guy that always wants to play. And uh, so when he has to miss time, it's difficult for him for sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, you think it's just for every player. I mean, when you get injuries, it's really the worst part of being an athlete. When you miss time, you have to do all this extra treatment and extra all this extra work to you know, get back. You know, into into game shape, get back into rhythm. You know, and especially if you are playing well and you're feeling good, and you, you know it, it, you get caught up in injury, it, it's difficult to deal with. Uh, but again, I mean, he, he understands it's part of you know the job we do. Things like that happen, and so he's just you know put all his focus into making sure he he gets back healthy and back on the court as soon as he can. Dan Savage, you you guys got some of your first practice time as a team since 
uh, Martell's injury. How beneficial uh, was this time from just an organizational perspective, getting the team organized in its different offensive sets and as you guys prepare for Boston? It was important. You know, it's always uh, good to, to get a uh, you know, practice time, even though, you know, we don't necessarily go long or do anything, you know, crazy out there. It's just, you know, about getting reps, you know, making sure we can work on our offense, our defense, uh, especially for the guys that are newer, the guys that are, you know, have to play in different positions now that we have some guys out uh, for the young guys. It's always beneficial. And uh, so uh, I think it was really good. You know, we, we did a lot of offense work today, uh, making sure, you know, we, you know, we, we know our plays. We know what we, what, what we want to run, uh, how to execute the timing of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's not going to get fixed over just one practice, but, you know, it helps, you know, um, for sure. And uh, so hopefully, you know, we can carry that into the game tomorrow. Uh, really, I mean, like I said, it, when, when you have injuries and, you know, when the schedule is so condensed, there's just no much time to work on things. I think that makes it the hardest because you kind of have to figure it out on the go. And for us veterans, you know, that have been around and they've been with Cliff for a while, it's not, you know, we can do it, but, you know, for some of the younger guys that are new and guys that are just new on the team, it takes some time. So I think this was, this was a very welcome for us today. Go ahead, Dan. Vooch, what, what are some of the keys for your team going against this Celtics team? And, and how do you prepare for, for a game like that when you don't necessarily know who the other team's going to have? Yeah, so we, we, we're not sure who, who they're going to have out there. But, I mean, who, whoever plays out there, you know, you have to, you know, be prepared for them. And, I mean, if they're in the NBA, that means that they can play. And you have to respect your opponent regardless, you know, of uh, – you know, if they played before or they played much or not. So you always have to respect your opponent and prepare to play a serious game. Uh, but I think for us, you know, it's going to have to start with our defense. Uh, you know, I think wh whatever they, they do out there, if we just do our base stuff well, I think it's going to give us a chance. Uh, and then offensively, uh, you know, just have to, you know, uh, do things that work for us, you know, move the ball, uh, create, you know, opportunities for each other. Uh, be active offensively, things like that. But I think it really comes back to your base. If you do your base well, you know, you're going to have a chance. And then, you know, obviously, if, you know, they have some guys out, if some different guys play, if they do some different things, you, you can adjust, you know, when the game happens because you're going to make little adjustments during the game if somebody gets born or something. So it's just uh, you just have to be prepared for that. But I think we have to start with our base and make sure we focus on us as well. Okay, we have time just for a couple more. Josh Cohen, OrlandoMagic.com. Hey, Vooch, when you first came into the NBA or at any point in your first few years in the league, did you think you'd come to a point where you'd be taking this many three-pointers? Obviously, centers now are taking threes at an all-time rate, but you yourself, did you kind of see this coming at any point prior to the last few years? No, for sure not. I mean, when I came into the NBA, it was still, you know, kind of old ways. You had, you know, two, uh, three, three outs and two in, you know, two big men and three guards or fours, whatever. And so it was very different way of playing. I mean, even guards weren't shooting as many threes as, you know, we bigs are now. So it's a, it was a total different way of playing. And, you know, as, you know, I think the league evolved over the years and, you know, came into, you know, uh, what it is today. But uh, yeah, for sure, I never expect to shoot as many threes. I mean, even until like, even if you asked me last year if I was going to take 10 threes in a game, you know, maybe once, but, you know, now it's like it just feels normal that, you know, a big man who can really shoot the ball, take seven, eight threes, and especially if he's efficient at it, it, it opens up a lot. So it's just the, the game's evolved, or, you know, and you have to adapt to it. Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Boots, just kind of building off of that, obviously you're someone who has improved your, his three-point shooting as your career has progressed. Um, I'm just curious, have you given any advice to Cole? He's Obviously, he struggled a little bit this year, which is not unusual for for uh, rookies to come into the league with you know with the with the three point line being farther. I'm just wondering if you've given him uh, any advice and sort of what adjustments he can make to become a better three point shooter. I mean, not specifically on the, the three point shooting. Uh, I wasn't really aware that he he was uh, struggling uh, like that, but it was just more in his play. He, he tends to get really you know. Uh, to be very hard on himself and uh you know it, it's good in a way you know to keep you know pushing yourself and keep wanting more of yourself but at the same time i just told him that you know he, he's coming you know into a league at a very difficult time where he didn't have summer league where he didn't have a full training camp you know where he didn't have really time to get accustomed to everything even to move here and you know, you know get a place to live learn the city or any of that so you know all that you know it, it's important so for him it was just uh so i told him you know you came into a difficult time uh, you're in the position where, you know, you're going to play against some of the best players in this league as point guard, especially now, you know, 
you know that you have to start you know it's even bigger responsibility so you just have to be patient you know keep uh you know keep working keep doing what you do and things will be better and so i, I gave my example what my my rookie year in philly started off playing i was playing well and then i didn't play it and i played again and i didn't play and it was back and forth so it's just it's just the way it is you know for some people it takes longer for some people you know it happens quicker and just to be patient and uh then you know, things good things will happen you know, he's a good worker he listens and uh, so usually you know when you do all that things good things happen so just told him to not be as far as in, on himself as he is thanks Luch. Dante Marcatelli, Fox Sports, Florida. And Vooch, the uh, greatest football player of all time, Tom Brady, will take the field on Sunday. Uh, how impressed are you with the Bucs and, and what, what they've done this year? And you have an off day. Will you be watching that game? Actually, I was thinking about that. We do have an off day since, uh, you know, we, we won't be allowed to, to uh, leave our room. It would be great, you know, to take advantage of that and watch some football, some good playoff games. So that would be fun. Uh, but yeah, I'm not Terrence Ross. I didn't jump on the, you know, Tampa Bay, uh, bad wagon. Uh, definitely didn't do that. <laughs> Philly Eagles fan, although it was a very, very rough year for us. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was expected. I mean, you have the greatest player of all time come in. Uh, he's going to, you know, obviously make you better and change things for the better. And so, which he did. And now it's his time in the playoffs. So it'll be, I'll definitely be looking forward to, to watching it and hopefully they can keep winning. Nice. Okay. Thanks. Time for it. Thank you so much, Nicola. Nope.